America, I've been telling the story of border agents uh, Ramos and Campion, whose lives were just turned upside down four years ago. Ramos and Campion, they were, they were doing their job. They were just trying to ch catch an illegal Mexican drug smuggler with a van packed with 800 pounds of dope. When the drug smuggler tried to escape, Ramos and Campion shot him in the butt. As for the smuggler, well, he just ran scurrying back across the border there. Ramos and Campion, charged and convicted with assault with a deadly weapon and sentenced to 11 and 12 years respectfully, or respectively. Serving their time began January 17, 2007. Meanwhile, the wives of Ramos and Campion desperately tried to have their husbands set free and people all across the country wrote letters, called their senator, their congressman in the White House. And on the last full day in office, it finally happened. President George W. Bush commuted the prison sentences of both gentlemen. Their release from prison came 31 days ago. Due to the terms of the probation, they have been under house arrest. They have not been allowed to speak to any media until right now. They can't even speak to each other, so I have to interview them individually here in the next few minutes. This is their first on-camera and exclusive interview with anyone on this program. First, let's go to former border agent Nacho Ramos. Hello, Nacho. How are you, my friend? How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. You know, it is, it is strange to finally talk to you because you are a fan of the show and you used to listen in solitary confinement to the radio show every day. So it, I, you might feel like you know me, but I, this is the first time that you and I have ever spoken to each other and actually had a conversation. Yes, I, uh, I did listen to you every day. Uh, I had told Stu earlier that uh, you are my staple from 12 to 3 every day. Um, uh, you, you help me get through that part of the day every day. You, um, you know, I never, I never thought of it while you were in solitary confinement. I know that there must have been times when you heard people call in and mention you and mention the situation and you could feel that things were starting to move and people were, were, um, were thinking and praying about you, which they were all the time. But I never thought of it the flip side. How many times did you turn on the radio or, or, or talk to somebody when they, when they weren't talking about your um, ordeal? Did you ever sit in solitary confinement and just say, oh, please, guys, please, I'm, I'm in here. Please don't forget about me. <laughs> uh, many times. Uh, that's... A daily, on a daily basis, actually, you know, uh, uh, every day you turn on the radio hoping to hear something uh, about us, and um, you know, the, uh, without the letters coming in on a daily basis, you know, that's that's what you were hoping to hear. Uh, you know, you just hoping to hear anything, something, because that that was your only outlet on the radio, and uh, obviously we're not the only things out there, but uh, you're just hoping to hear something. You know, right now, uh, the world has changed since you've been in um, prison. Um, the, the country has been having and struggling with problems for a while, but in the last two years, we have changed. I mean, even in the last year, we've changed. People right now feel wildly alone, like nobody's hearing their voice, um, that nothing's going to change, and they're just feeling powerless. I think you are exactly the person to speak directly to America because I can't imagine feeling more powerless than the President of the United States uh, wielding power and making sure that his, in this case, I believe his henchman, puts you uh, in jail. You're in solitary confinement. No voice whatsoever. How did you not give up and how did you not just feel like totally alone? Well, knowing that so many people were, were supporting us, hearing, receiving their letters, knowing that so many people were supporting us, their prayers, their, 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 their constant letters, I, I, I can't thank everybody enough. And, and, and to know that nobody gave up on us, here, listening to you every day. Uh, you know, you are the voice, and, and so many people out there, you know, you, you, the people out there do have a voice, and we, me sitting here today, proves that um, yeah because I, nobody, since nobody gave up on us it it, it shows that I mean uh, the pressure that everybody not show, put, I, put up yes I'm sorry to interrupt you I'm sorry we have we have bad satellite no, connection fine. here I, I, I have to tell you we, we we have to jump over to Jose here before we lose that satellite link 
All right, now let's go to the other member of the dynamic duo, former border agent Jose Campion is joining us now. If you're seeing him on the uh, television, he's holding a phone. He's not like, hey, Mom, I'm on TV. We've lost the audio connection on the satellite, and we just only have the picture. So it's going to be uh, kind of uh, a little Alexander Graham Bell and space technology. Jose, how are you, sir? Wonderful, Glenn. How are you? Uh, very good. When I talked to you earlier this morning, you had just removed the ankle bracelet. Uh, the people who removed it had just left your house. And I said, have you even been outside off your own property yet? And you said no. I asked you to walk outside. You took the phone with you. The birds, I could hear them chirping. The birds were chirping and you stood in the middle of the street. I told you to get out of the middle of the street because street, I think that's jaywalking. But what have you done since? Uh, we went out and had lunch. We went to this, I guess, a fancy gourmet restaurant, I think they call it. It's called Burger King. Burger King for lunch. <laughs> when I, um, and, I'm, and I'm sure you didn't do this, and I would be very disappointed if you did, but uh, the rebel in some would say, take your children and skip school for the day and uh, go have a good time with them. Did you... Did you take your kids to school this morning, or did they stay with? The, did you keep the family together today? Oh no, they had to go to school. Um, the boss wouldn't allow it. So they went to school. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what my boss would say. My wife would say that too. <laughs> They're going to school. They can see dad again. Did you ever? Yeah. Did you ever, Jose, um, when you were in solitary confinement and it looked like? nothing was going to happen. Did you ever have a point where you uh, were about to give up? Uh, there were. There were a few times, but uh, a lot of the, uh, the letters that we were receiving, that I was receiving, uh, support, prayers from people all over the country really, really helped. I mean, they would, and it was just, I mean, they were coming in just, just in time. I mean, once we heard the, when I first heard the news about the, the appeals court turning our case down, I mean, I was, I mean, that, that really hit me hard. And uh had some letters. As a matter of fact, they came in that, that afternoon, and I hadn't even read them. And I started reading them, and, and those really helped. With a lot of prayers from people it really helped me. Did you, um, how can I phrase this? I want to be careful on the the conditions of your parole, which, by the way, Gresh, I don't even know. Do, how, how odd is this for... Uh, um, for all these conditions where you can't talk, you've been, your sentence has been commuted, then you couldn't talk to the press, now you can talk to the press, but only a little bit uh, to the press. Does your attorney say, um, Jose, when you can actually speak like a normal American again? I guess we just have to wait until, wait and see what happens with the, with the Supreme Court because our case is still, is still pending. But we still, we're still waiting and and see what's going to happen with that. And the Supreme Court, you're trying to overturn everything, so this is erased from your your uh, record. Right. Okay. We wish you luck, and we will talk to you again. Hopefully we can talk to you on the radio show uh, next week as well. Welcome home, and job thank well you. done. One last thing, yep. Glenn. And if I could, sure. I, I want to thank you. I'd like to thank you for all of the, uh, all of the help and support you gave my family. But it, it really means a lot. Uh, when you know, listening to you on the radio uh, every morning, really, I mean, it really helped. You know, it, it, I, it I have to tell you, Jose, of, uh, it is, um, it, America is an amazing place, and there are amazing people that, oh, when, they, when they just, when they see an injustice, they stand up to help correct it. There are a lot of people that have been in your corner for a long time. We'll be back in just a second.